So while I've been doing more shareware and games videos, I've been itching to do another sound card video because I know there's at least half a dozen people who watch this channel who enjoy them. And today, we have not just a sound card, but everyone's favorite villain, the PCI sound card. So this very OEM-y looking unit is the Rockwell Riptide. And it's also got this little daughter board called the AV Riser Assy No. But is the whole card Assy? No. Now the key nine among you might notice that this is a modem as well. And I've seen a lot of uh, ISA cards do the modem sound card combo. Usually doesn't end well, but this is the first PCI card that I've seen do this. But it of course has legacy support for Sound Blaster, FM, and a wavetable. So that's what I'm interested in looking at. So let's take a look at this Rockwell Riptide. The main chip on this card that provides audio functionality is the RACC010. This was made by Rockwell Semiconductor around 1998, very close to when they spun off into Connexent systems, which is why you'll see versions of this card with both Connexent and Rockwell branding on it floating around in the wild. Regardless, it's going to sound the same whether it says Rockwell or Connexent. If you look closely at any version of the chip, it also has ARM printed on it, and there are ARM LTD trademarks on the official data sheet. It's not really mentioned specifically, but I assume when it states that the legacy audio related registers and DMA functions are controlled by an on-chip processor, that is what they're talking about. Obviously, we're not talking about a Qualcomm Snapdragon here, uh, but it's likely using the ARM architecture, which has been around a lot longer than you might expect. And I think this is the first time I've seen it on a sound card. It also mentions that all legacy functions and direct sound are done in hardware. So there should be no CPU overhead involved here, which is always a bonus. As for the physical connections, the main card has a headphone out, an MPU 401 game port interface, and RJ11 jacks for the modem. With the optional daughter board, you also get a mic, line in, and line out jacks. I used the line out for recording the game captures for this video, and given this is a cheap OEM card, it has a very low noise floor. These are some of the cleaner recordings I've been able to capture over the years from an old sound card. With those little details out of the way, let's install it in a physical machine and see how that part goes. For the test system, I'm using this Dell Dimension T600R, because in the past, it's been a general rock star with PCI-based sound card compatibility. I try to give the disclaimer that PCI cards are very picky about hardware configurations, so you might have a completely different experience than me if you use a system that does not play well with PCI cards. Just do some research first if you want one, or do what most people do and avoid PCI sound cards altogether and leave the testing of them to idiots like me. That said, it does have the cheap advantage. Uh, I think I got this thing for less than $6 shipped to my house from eBay. Can't really beat that price in today's overinflated vintage market, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's see what it's like to use first. So in goes the Riptide sound card along with the daughter board and while I had this computer open, I thought I would take the opportunity to install a fan on my Voodoo 3 in a very professional manner. <laughs> and don't, look, don't look too closely at it. As for OS, we will be using Windows 98 SE because that seems most fitting for the time period and our application. As for drivers, they're a bit weird and hard to find online. The most up-to-date driver package and the only one you're likely to find is the version 4.17, but it's just an update package and while it does have the drivers, it's missing the required files to make the wavetable work, which for our case is very much a problem. According to some sources online, these files are only included in the HP recovery disk, which I have no idea which one I would need. So what I did is I found a related but incompatible driver package for the Riptide Chameleon. Then I just took two files from that, one called the genmidi.wsl 
and the other called gmram.ewa. Then I just copy those into the compatible driver package and then everything just kind of Todd Howard's into place and just works. I will upload a copy of these modified drivers on archive.org for your convenience below if you want to get this working for yourself. Other than that, it comes with a setup program that does everything for you and in my case worked with minimal fuss. Real mode DOS drivers are also included with the Reputil TSR but I couldn't get it to work. There's really no documentation on how to get this to work. I'm sure there's some command line switches you need to type in in order for it to detect the card properly, but I didn't really bother since if you're using a PCI card, you probably want to use it in Windows anyway where the wavetable is going to work. There are of course some exceptions of games that work better in real mode DOS, but for the purposes of this video I just didn't really bother. Back to Windows, conveniently right in Device Manager it tells you the proper interrupts to use as well as options for the wavetable quality and sample rate, both of which I set to the maximum. The software wavetable appears to be an 8 megabyte sample set and I think it sounds alright for what it is. I've certainly heard better, but it's not awful, and we'll see what it sounds like in some games shortly. For now, let's talk about SB compatibility and the FM synth. For digitized sound effects, it emulates either SB Pro or Original Sound Blaster, and from my testing, it does so successfully for the most part. As for problems, Duke Nukem 2 has some strange issue where all the digital sound effects are clipping in a way that I've never seen before. And Skyroad seems to repeat the same sound effects into infinity for some reason. Overall though, it's not bad. These are pretty minor problems compared to what a lot of PCI cards struggle with. So whatever magic they're doing with their so-called patented PCI Sound Blaster emulation, it seems to be working with only a few hiccups. As for the emulated FM, it does both AdLib and OPL3 with varying results. Some games sound mostly normal, like Commander Keen and the early Apogee games, while games that push the limits of FM a bit more, like Tyrion or Dune, end up sounding a bit wonky. Ultimately, you as the viewer are the judge, which is why I'm providing these samples now. So tell me what you think of it, and if you had one of these back when they were a thing. As always, thanks to my supporters here on YouTube and Patreon as well, I appreciate your comments, your support, and just the general engagement you give the channel. It's really awesome, especially on these later videos that I've had. The response has been kinda crazy. Enough of that though, let's give this Riptide card a chance in a few DOS games, and you guys let me know what you think of it.
Where is it? <laughs> 